today. Cheap Horizon CPUs are coming. NVIDIA finally gives an official statement on melting 4090s. AMD trash talks NVIDIA. And the first reviews on the new gaming GPU that's not AMD, NVIDIA, or Intel. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, cheaper Ryzen CPUs are nearly here. According to a leaker on Twitter and later reported by video cards, AMD is gearing up to release their non-X Ryzen 7000 variants, and the prices are pretty impressive. As you can see, if this is right, AMD is planning to release three parts, the Ryzen 9 7900, Ryzen 7 7700, and Ryzen 5 7600, and they're all apparently coming in Q1 of next year, so not too far off. As far as pricing, the 7900 comes in at $429, which is $120 cheaper than the 7900X, and while it only gets a 5.4 GHz boost clock, the good thing about non-X models is that many times they can be overclocked to at least near their X counterpart. Of course, that may not be true for this series, but it has mostly been so far. Moving on to the 7700, it comes in at $329, which is $70 less than the 7700X, and it has a 5.3 GHz boost. Finally is the 7600, which is also $70 cheaper than its X model counterpart, and it gets a boost of 5.1 GHz. Ultimately, that's a nice price drop from their X variants, but it's still a tough call. The main issue is really their AM5 board prices. Sure, this helps, but I'm not sure if it's enough. Maybe we'll get even better prices on their current models come Black Friday. That would definitely be good to see. But not as good as this vehicle shooter with today's sponsor, CrossOut, the free-to-play online vehicle shooter that lets you make your own death machines from scratch, meaning everything is made from individual parts with nearly endless possibilities, from structural elements to cabins, wheels, and tons of weapons. I'm talking chainsaws, lances, machine guns, crossbows, rail cannons, just to name a few. And the gameplay itself is really fun with multiple game modes, from PvP to even PvE raids and clan wars, or you can simply enjoy Enjoy the adventure mode. Basically, there's a ton to do, and it's actually easy to get into. You can have your first vehicle built in minutes. To top it off, the game has crossplay between PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, so play for free by visiting my link in the description. Plus, you'll get a free bonus when you register with my link. Next up for today, we have another update on the 4090's melting 16-pin connectors. This time, it looks like we finally have at least one of the major causes for the failures, and NVIDIA released a statement. The story comes from Gamers Nexus, who recently shared a video that goes really deep into the issue. I'm talking they even sent melted cables out to a failure analysis lab for testing, and what they found is really interesting. But the big news here is that Gamers Nexus was actually able to reproduce the issue themselves by melting their own connector. And believe it or not, one of the main issues appears to be users not fully inserting the cables into the socket, along with a bin near the connector at the same time. In fact, it has to be out by a couple millimeters or so. As you can see right here, there's a line that shows where the connector was seated, and it was pretty far from all the way in. Not only that, but when the connector was soft enough from heating up, it bent to one side, which indicates that there was a bin putting pressure on the connector. And those two things are what caused gamers next Nexus connector to melt. Now, the reason I said the main cause is that at least one user claims to have a melted connector, yet it was seated correctly with no gaps and no side bends. With that, another theory from Gamers Nexus is that the lab found debris in the connector, as well as what seems to be an issue with the nickel plating process. Either way, the main problem does look to mostly be incorrectly seated cables, which is at least somewhat a user error issue. Of course, given we haven't really heard much about this with 8-pin connectors, there is some argument against design. Whether it's simply too hard to fully put the connector in, or the wattage is simply too high for one connector. With that said, while I was working on this, NVIDIA put out a statement essentially confirming Gamers Nexus conclusion, and that they're working on ways to ensure the connector is secure before powering on. Hopefully there really aren't any other causes. Next up, while talking 16-pin connectors, an AMD executive just made fun of NVIDIA in the most brutal way. In a new tweet from AMD's Senior Director of Marketing, Sasa Marinkovic, hopefully I said that right, says to stay safe this holiday season at AMD Radeon, and he shared an image of the two 8-pin connectors. Obviously, this is a slap at the melting 16-pin connector issues, and the post received mostly positive responses. 
Regardless, I think there is something to be said about the peace of mind that comes with 8-pin connectors. This is almost always an issue with newer tech, though not so much fire hazards. Then again, according to Gamers Nexus, GPU makers are claiming the failure rate is somewhere between 0.05% to 1%, which isn't nothing, but it's also not a massive issue. I will at least say that this statement is definitely a burn to Nvidia. Okay, that was bad, I'm sorry. And lastly for today, if you remember just a few days ago, I discussed a brand new gaming GPU that wasn't made by Nvidia, AMD, or Intel. And if you didn't see that video, this is definitely a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Either way, today we actually have our first reviews of the card. But as a quick recap, it's called the MTT S80, and it's made by the Chinese company More Threads. The card comes with 4096 FP32 cores and 16GB of GDDR6 across a 256 bit bus, and currently it's only sold as a combo with a motherboard. With all of that out of the way, let's get to the reviews, and let's just say it's pretty interesting. For starters, each reviewer seemed to do nearly the exact same tests, and a lot of them were some pretty old tests, like DirectX 9's 3D Mark 2006. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean the reviews aren't on the up and up. They may have just followed the reviewer's guide to the letter. Either way, when it comes to synthetic benchmarks, they compare it to Nvidia's 36 and it wins in some areas, though these aren't all that important to actual gaming performance. Unigen Valley is one of the only synthetic benchmarks with the best chance of showing actual performance, and the 3060 got up to 7 plus times better performance. Not only that, but reviewers did go over a few games, and unfortunately for now, the MTT S80 only supports DirectX 9, so they had to run some pretty old games. And from that, in League of Legends, it got 140 to 150 frames at 1080p low settings, though they later state that it's actually 136 at 1080p, so I'm not sure what they mean. Maybe high settings instead of low. But then at 2K, it's 120 frames. For reference, at very high quality settings at 1080p, it looks like the RX 460 gets around 190 frames per second. Of course, that is an older benchmark, but I believe that's on DirectX 9. Moving on, it shows Crossfire as high as 180 frames, Diablo 3, 90 to 100 frames, so definitely nothing to write home about. Unfortunately, they didn't do any comparison with the 3060 here, but given what I'm seeing, it certainly doesn't look good. Not only that, but the GPU only officially supports 11 games, with 60 confirmed to work, but it's just not optimized for those. Plus, the power draw is pretty terrible as well. At the end of the day, the MTT S80 is nothing to write home about, but hopefully it can still motivate AMD and Nvidia to do better. And make sure you pick up the free-to-play vehicle shooter Cross Sound. It has the coolest weapons you can think of, and it's cross-platform so everyone can get in on the fun. Check that out in the description below. So while that does it for today, what do you think about this new gaming GPU competitor? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!